In this video, we're going to focus on finding the empirical formula of a compound in a typical combustion analysis problem. So let's begin. Let's read the problem. A compound consists only of carbon and hydrogen, 13.725 grams of CO2 and 6.742 grams of water are formed during complete combustion of the compound. What is the empirical formula of the unknown compound? So we have a hydrocarbon, that is a molecule that only contains carbon and hydrogen, and it's undergoing combustion. In a combustion reaction, the hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen gas from the air, and it produces carbon dioxide and water. Now we're given the mass of the products, and in order to find the empirical formula, we need to find the number of moles of carbon and hydrogen that are found in the compound. So let's do this. Let's start with 13.725 grams of CO2 and let's convert it to moles. So the molar mass of CO2 has one carbon atom and two oxygen atoms. So carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01 and oxygen is 16. 2 times 16 is 32 plus 12, that's 44. So one mole of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44.01 grams. Now, every molecule of CO2 contains one carbon atom. So we could say that for each mole of carbon dioxide, there's one mole of carbon. So notice how the units grams of CO2 cancels and moles of CO2. So now we have the moles of carbon. Now keep in mind, all of the carbon, um, excuse me, all of the carbon atoms that are found in CO2, they all come from this compound. So the moles of carbon in CO2 is equal to the moles of carbon in the compound. The same is true for hydrogen. All of the hydrogen atoms comes from this compound. So the moles of hydrogen that can be found in water is equal to the moles of hydrogen found in the unknown compound. So let's do the math. 13.725 divided by 44.01. So that's 0 0.3119 if you round it. Now let's do the same thing for hydrogen. Let's start with the mass of water. So we have 6.742 grams of H2O. And let's convert that to moles. So water has two hydrogen atoms and a single oxygen atom. And hydrogen is 1.008. So the molar mass of water is 18. 0 0.016 grams per mole. So every mole of water contains a mass of 18.016 grams. Now every water molecule contains two hydrogen atoms. So therefore, we could say that one mole of water is equal to two moles of hydrogen. So now let's perform the operation. 6.742 divided by 18.016 times 2. So it's 0.7484. Now the last thing that we need to do is divide these two numbers by the smallest of what we see here. The smallest is clearly 0.3119. So 0 0.3119 divided by itself is going to be 1. Now if we take 0 0.7484 divided by 0 0.3119, that's about 2.4. So that's for hydrogen. And for carbon, it's 1. So now we can use those numbers as subscripts. So we have C1 and H. 
2.4. Now we don't have whole numbers quite yet, but we need to get whole numbers. If you have a decimal of 0.5 and you want to turn it to a whole number, multiply it by 2. If you have a decimal that's 0.333, multiply it by 3 because 1 divided by 3 is 0.333. If you have 0.25, multiply it by 4 because 1 over 4 is 0.25. Now if you have 0.2, multiply it by 5 because 0.2 times 5 is 1. And what about 0.4? Well if you multiply 0.4 by 5 because it's a multiple of 0.2, you will also get a whole number. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply this by 5. 1 times 5 is 5. 2.4 times 5 is 12. So sometimes you have to multiply by the right whole number to get both subscripts as a whole number. So if I saw 2.5, I would multiply it by 2. If I saw h had a subscript of 2.33, I would multiply by 3. If it was 2.25, I would multiply by 4. So in the future, if you see other numbers, you know what to multiply by. So C5H12, that's the empirical formula of the unknown compound. Now let's work on another combustion analysis problem. Number 2, a compound consists only of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. 8.272 grams of carbon dioxide and 4.515 grams of water are produced during complete combustion of 3.765 grams of the compound. What is the empirical formula of the compound? What is the molecular formula if the molar mass of the compound is 300.47 grams per mole? So this time we have a compound that has carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and we're going to react it with oxygen gas and it's going to produce CO2 and water. Now it's important to understand that just like the last problem all of the carbon atoms in CO2 comes only from the compound and all of the hydrogen atoms in water comes only from the compound as well. However the oxygen that's found in CO2 and water, it comes not only from the compound, but also from the air. So keep that in mind. In the last example, we were able to find the moles of carbon and the moles of hydrogen. However, we need to find the grams of carbon and hydrogen first. Because if we can do that, then we could subtract those numbers from the mass of the compound and that will give us the grams of oxygen that only comes from this compound. So this problem is going to be longer than the last one. So let's start with 8.272 grams of carbon dioxide. Now let's convert it to moles. So one mole of CO2 has a mass of 44.01 grams. And now let's convert it to the moles of carbon. Every molecule of CO2 contains one carbon atom. So therefore we could say for each mole of CO2, there's one mole of carbon. And now let's convert it back into grams. One mole of carbon has a mass of 12.01 grams of carbon. So it's 8.272 divided by 44.01 times 12.01. And so the mass of carbon is 2.257 grams. Now let's do the same thing for hydrogen. So let's start with 4.515 grams of water. And let's convert it to moles. So one mole of H2O has a mass of 18.016 grams. Now there are two hydrogen atoms for every molecule of water. So we could say that there's two moles of hydrogen 
for each mole of H2O. And now let's convert it back to grams. So one mole of hydrogen has a mass of 1.008 grams. So it's 4.515 divided by 18.016 times 2 times 1.008. So therefore, we have 0 0.5052 grams of hydrogen. So now, to find the mass of oxygen, we need to take the mass of the total compound and subtract it by these two numbers. Now let's take the mass of the compound, which is 3.765, and let's subtract it by the mass of carbon and the mass of hydrogen. So I got 1.0028 grams of oxygen. So now that we have the mass of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen that is within this compound, we could find the moles of each of those elements. And then we could use that to find the empirical formula. So let's start with carbon. So we have 2.257 grams of carbon. Let's convert it to moles. So let's divide it by its atomic weight. And so that's going to be 0.1879 moles of carbon. Now let's do the same thing for hydrogen. So we had a 0 0.505, 2 grams of hydrogen. And the molar mass is 1.008. So this is equal to 0 0.5012. And now for oxygen, we have a mass of 1.0028. And the molar mass is 16. So there are 0 0.06268 moles of oxygen. Now we need to divide each of these three numbers by the lowest of the three numbers, which is clearly the moles of oxygen. So this is going to be 1. Any number divided by itself is always 1. 0.1879 divided by 0 0.06268 is 3. And I forgot one of the 6's in this number. 0 0.5012 divided by 0 0.06268. 268. So this is about 8. So we can see what the empirical form is going to be. C3H8O1. Or we could say C3H8O. Now that we have the empirical formula for part A, let's move on to part B. So what is the molecular formula if the molar mass of the compound is 300.47 grams per mole? So now that we have the empirical formula, how can we find the molecular formula? The first thing we need to do is find the molar mass of the empirical formula. So it contains three carbon atoms eight hydrogen atoms plus an oxygen atom. So that's 3 times 12.01 plus 8 times 1.008 plus 16.
So the molar mass is 60.094 grams per mole. Now the molar mass of the molecular formula, which we're trying to find, is 300.47. So what you want to do next, you want to take the molar mass of the molecular formula and divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula. 300.47 divided by 60.094, that is equal to 5. So if you multiply the molar mass of the empirical formula by 5, you'll get the molar mass of the molecular formula. Therefore, to get the molecular formula, multiply the subscripts of the empirical formula by 5. So C3H8O1 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. 8 times 5 is 40. 1 times 5 is 5. So this is the molecular formula of the compound. It's C15H40O5. That's the answer for part B, and this is the answer of part A.